right. Okay, here we go. Welcome back to another episode of Listen Up brought to you by Stack Sports. And today we are joined by Isis Young, former Syracuse, Florida, Fordham, Siena, women's <laughs> college basketball player. She also broadcasts a variety of basketball games throughout the East Coast and now gets a chance, a crack at professional <laughs> basketball in Germany for the Saar Louis Royals. Isis, thank you for taking the time today. Have you been to Germany? Hey, uh, thanks for having me. One, two, I have not been to Germany, but coolest fact ever. My little brother is a professional soccer player in Germany. He has been so for four years. So I have somewhat of a connection to Germany, so to speak. Um, he will become my official translator once I get over there. Uh, he's fully aware and not really excited about the job, but that's what it's going to be. Um, but yeah, so I know nothing about Germany except what I know about him and following um, his team. So what has he told you about Germany? Um, he's told me that if you order fish, you got to be specific because they will bring you out a fish head. Uh, that is not something that we normally, yes, eat here. Um, that's pretty common over there. Uh, they drive really fast on the highway. Um, here, our speed limit might be 75. Over there, it's about 85. Um, and then people drive, you know, 10 above the speed limit. And so they're racing. Um, and so I will have a car over there. So he gave a suggestion, like just to, you know, get acquainted, be comfortable and don't, you know, kind of get nervous with how fast cars go. Um, and then I might get beeped at because I'm only going 65. I'm not supposed to be going 85. Um, otherwise he really likes it. You know, he's there for soccer. And so football over there is huge. Uh, and so lots of followings, um, lots of fans. And then, you know, it comes with fans, right? You have great days and they love you. You have bad days and they don't. Um, and so he really appreciates though, the fan base that he has in Germany, just it's consistent. Um, they really love sports over there. Um, and he says they talk about women's basketball over there too. So he thinks that that will be uh, really great for me just be in that country for my first year. Well, what a great brother to not only share all this <laughs> insight, but be welcoming and say, hey, you're coming to Germany. I might as well give you the lowdown since we're both going to be playing our respective sports. So when do you leave? I leave August 15th. Um, so I've got, it, it's counting down. I've started to do like the, okay, I've got six weeks and now I have five and this is what it's going to be. What am I going to do for my last two weeks? Um, so yeah, August 15th is the day. So what does an early July day look like for you then? Are you researching Germany things? <laughs> Are you looking up at your teammates? Are you talking to your team? What? Give me a, a day in the life. Yeah. Uh, so our team recently just finished um, being fully put together. We have our full roster now as of maybe a week ago. Um, so I followed everyone on Instagram, kind of haven't had conversations. We've had group chat conversations with our team about, you know, passports and booking flights, logistical stuff like that. Um, and just what day we'll start practice. Um, so I'm sure those conversations will ramp up soon as it gets closer. Um, but I followed my teammates on Instagram. I know a couple of them actually, which is great. Um, so that's exciting for me. Uh, there is um, one, uh, one of my teammates, she played at Georgia Tech. She played a couple of years before I was there when I got to Syracuse. Um, but while I was there, she was a GA. And so ran across her a couple of times. So it'll be nice to see a familiar face. Um, and then a cool, another fact, uh, my assistant coach uh, is from Baltimore. Um, so I'm from, you know, South Jersey. So he's about two and a half hours away. Uh, he's been in Germany for 13 years, um, plays point guard um, on the men's side of our program. And so um, it was just really nice to have a conversation with him, um, you know, to, see someone who is thriving in overseas in a different country, both basketball wise, but he's also this past this next year, he's going to be playing and then also coaching with our team. So just really cool person. I'm excited to just be around and learn from kind of, you know, be a sponge, um, but also glad that I'll have someone who I can talk about wah wah with. Uh, and it won't seem like I'm the most boring person there. So um, that that's kind of what it looks like really is just team stuff. Um, but I work for my mom during the day. So I work about eight to four every day. Um, and then I get in about two workouts. So I'll do a strength and conditioning. I have a trainer right now that's working on that with me. Um, and then I'll do a variety of basketball workouts, whether it's with my dad, a trainer um, by myself, my little cousin will come and rebound and I'll bribe him uh, with hot fries. Um, that every time he goes, that's what I get him afterwards as a thank you. Um, and then playing a lot of pickup. And I was in a summer league in Philly. Um, so doing that. So it's pretty busy. I'm not really one to sit at home and just kind of do nothing. Um, but also I'm trying to enjoy everything, right? And just get a mix of, hey, I'm seeing family. Hey, I'm working out. Hey, I'm, you know, getting ready for overseas, all those things. 
Isis, let's go back to coming out of high school in South Jersey and embarking on this basketball journey. You were ranked a top 10 guard in the country. You knew you had a career in basketball, wherever that might take you. What was your mindset heading into college? Honestly, it was really just to crush it. Um, I just, you know, kind of pictured the fairy tale story of, you know, getting there as a freshman. Um, if not starting, then being one of the first people off the bench, um, you know, getting to learn from the upperclassmen, you know, possibly getting, um, you know, like on the uh, all rookie team in the SEC, because I went to University of Florida first, um, and, and really just doing that. Um, and so, you know, you talked about the end of high school, the first thing that happened that let me know that my plan is not the plan that's going to happen uh, is I tore my ACL. So it was my 17th game of my high school career. And I tore my ACL. Um, and so the first year that I was at Florida, I sat and redshirted, uh, which is just extremely tough. I, obviously, battling an injury like that and going through surgery uh, at 17, 18 years old is something that I would not wish on anyone. Um, but then also doing part of that away from home. Again, I'm from Jersey. And so I went to Florida. So I was a distance from home. Um, and then just rehab. I, I tell everyone, I think that was the toughest thing I've ever been through is just rehab, you know, learning how to walk again, learning to run again. Well, I'm, you know, trying to become myself again as a basketball player, right? And then the mental aspect of you may never look how you looked before. Um, and that's just the reality of it, right? It's only the great athletes, the tip-top ones that, you know, come back from injuries and that seem better than they were before. Um, most of the time now you can kind of tell, right, the limitations. And so all that was kind of weighing on me as a, a 17, 18 year old, which was a lot. Um, so coming out of high school, I definitely I was met with some obstacles um, but, you know, I, I kind of made the most of it, right, and just got through it. Um, and by the time I was ready to play, you know, my, my red shirt freshman year, um, I was good to go. And I felt comfortable. My knee was strong. Um, so that was the most important thing for me at that moment. Let's touch on the surgeries because you didn't just have one. You had two <laughs> on the yeah. same leg. Uh, I'm curious on, you touched on the mental fatigue it had, but uh, athletes and injuries play a detrimental part in, in right. his career. And I think of what would happen if Kobe never tore his ACL, what right. would happen with Derek Rose, if he didn't have his knee, knee problems and knee surgeries after he won an MVP season. Yeah. Was there any doubt that you would ever play again? Oh, a hundred percent. Um, you know, I, so I, I, I tore my ACL five years after I tore the first one. Um, so I was at Fordham. I just left Syracuse. I was a grad transfer. Um, and I was getting ready to play, um, you know, at Fordham, I was expected to start. I was one of those, you know, on the newcomers list, right, to um, the A-10. And, and so I was getting a lot of hype about that, really excited to play for that team, be close to home. And so when I tore it, which was in the first two weeks of practice, like the first two weeks that I was on campus. So it, this is not even technically preseason, right? This was the pre-preseason before lots of classes started and things like that. Um, and so when I tore it, I think I was just devastated, uh, honestly. You know, um, I remember my dad telling me later, he was like, you know, your mom, when you told us, you know, she had just said to me, I'm devastated. And he said, you're devastated. Can you imagine how she feels? <laughs> um, and so, but the first thing I did was, you know, I cried it out. My doctor gave me a hug because I think he, he knew like how brokenhearted of a moment it was. And I went home uh, to my dorm and I just wrote out all my options. I just said, okay, we can not play again. We can rehab it and we can become a coach. We can just rehab it and try to play again. We can just rehab it to play a college season and then call it there. I've always wanted to play professionally, but I was becoming okay with like, it might be just may not last to make it to the professional level. Um, and then, and then a, a, one of my options was just to go home. I honestly was just, you know, I had, I just gotten my master's degree from Syracuse. Um, you know, I had a good college career if we're going from, you know, the University of Florida to Syracuse. I mean, if it ended there, no one would have said anything bad about my career. I could have been proud. My kids would have been proud of me. Um, and so just all that went through my mind. Um, but at first, I honestly just wanted to come home. I just told my parents, like, you know, I, I just got here. I'm a transfer. I don't know the team. They don't know me. I'm completely new. Um, and I have a degree in something that I really want to do that I know I can make it a career. And so we might just hang basketball up and I'll just come home and rehab and try to find uh, broadcasting work for the season. Um, and then I had my last option, which was the best option, which was to rehab it, um, to not put any pressure on rehab. Like however long it took is however long it's going to take to get back. As I go along, I'll see how I feel about playing again and that I'll just do broadcasting in the meantime. Um, and, I, and I will say that throughout my rehab, 
the more that I broadcasted and saw games, the more I just said, I have to play again. Like, it's just no way that I could just stop now. I just kept envisioning myself playing and what I'm learning. And I'm taking notes for myself as well as I'm broadcasting and analyzing the game. And so I think just the more I called games, the more I said, you still see yourself playing and you still have that in you. And let's rehab like you want to play again. Um, and my rehab guy made it happen and God made it happen. So it was, it was tough though. I, I tell you devastation. It was tough. And, and I think anyone who goes through injuries can tell you, it looks different for everyone. Everyone has their different struggles. Uh, but it was a point where my knee wasn't getting completely straight. And so that's one of the main things about extension and like ACLs, you have to get your knees straight because it's really important that you can play on, on a full range of motion. Um, or you're probably going to get injured again. And so uh, I had I had a meeting with the doctor three months after my surgery. And he said, you know, at this point, we're looking at maybe having another surgery because your knee's not getting straight, you know, or we're just going to have to, you know, maybe let you be like that and just and try to prevent injuries. Um, but he had told me, he said he would like to do another surgery and clean out my knee because of all the scar tissue. Uh, and so I think that kind of flipped a switch in me just to be like, no, I'm not doing another surgery. We're just going to make it work. And so that's what happened. <laughs> it's straight today though. So that's good. What or who helped you the most through that transition? Great question. Um, I would say God, you know, first and foremost, just having a lot of faith that the plan that I'm on and the path that I'm on is a plan um, that these things aren't happening to me because I did anything wrong. Right. Or that I wasn't prepared or I'm not strong enough. They just simply happen. Um, and then I really think the team, I think the team felt, you know, just, oh my goodness, like we were so excited to play with her. Uh, there were no seniors on the team. And so I was going to be the only senior on the team and I'm a grad transfer. And so again, I'm coming in, you know, and having this air about leadership, but really don't know how to lead my teammates because I don't know them. Um, and so they were just super supportive, you know, just super supportive about rehab, about coming to practice. They still would ask me questions about our plays and the game and watching film and different stuff like that. So they made me feel so apart, um, honestly, that I didn't feel like I was rehabbing alone and just not there. Um, but also, honestly, you said who or what the what is broadcasting, you know, just broadcasting games got me through it because I just had something else to focus on rather than being sad that I was injured and that everyone else was getting, you know, getting to play this game that they love so much. And for some reason I'm out another year and I can't. Um, and so broadcasting got me through, just be able to focus on that and build my career while I was in school um, was really a, a light, honestly. I, I, would, I don't think I would have made it as well as I did if I, didn't, if I wasn't broadcasting. Let's touch on broadcasting Syracuse and Newhouse specifically. You don't yeah. know this, but the first time I ever met you was at a admitted student orientation for prospective students coming into the program. You were one of the current student tour guides and you were yeah. helping us get acclimated, answering a lot of questions. And I remember when you introduced yourself with the other classmates, uh, I told my mom, I said, oh, she might be someone I need to talk to. It looks like <laughs> she has she has her life situated. She knows what she's doing. And I remember when we were getting split into groups to go on the tour, I was split off and I wasn't in your group initially. Yeah. And when we were living, leaving the room, we were going left. You guys were going right. And yeah. I grabbed my mom and I said, I don't care if we're in this group or not. <laughs> we have to go in ISIS's group. Cause I know I could just tell you have an aura about you that you know what you're doing. You're passionate, but you also have an understanding of the full encompass of life. There's more to life than just new house and what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, so aside from that, how did Newhouse and Syracuse change your life beyond the basketball court? Yeah, thank you for that. Um, you know, I, I think athletes struggle sometimes with only having an identity as an athlete, right? Um, you wake up as an athlete, you are a student athlete, you go home as an athlete. Um, sometimes we forget that we're also people, right? Like there, are, there, there has to be something that exists outside of your sport. Um, because otherwise, when your sport isn't going right, which clearly I've experienced a lot of in terms of being injured, uh, you have to have something that can continue to uplift you, right, or focus on. And so I think Newhouse did that for me. Um, I remember, you know, getting the email that I got into Newhouse and crying. Like, I remember because I, I could see it. I could see the just the, the possibility, I guess, of going to this school, learning this information, getting these connections and doing that all while I'm playing basketball and playing at a high level. Um, and so I think for me, 
um, you know, Newhouse just gave me one, a career, um, two, a ton of relationships that have been awesome to me that I've cherished and that uh, continue to grow, even though I'm not there. Um, and then I think a sense of community, you know, just understanding that we all really help each other out. You know, we talked about all the time that Newhouse is super competitive and you're, you're constantly competing, which I think is one of the reasons I thrived in it because I, competition is all I know. Um, but also understanding that it's a community, right? That you're supporting the next brother or sister or new house that's around you, right? The new house mafia is a real thing. Um, that, you know, getting alumni who follow me and say, hey, this is Ice the basketball player. Well, this is also Ice who goes to Newhouse. Like that, that was really cool for me. And so it was cool to be able to add that to my identity and to thrive in that. Um, and then honestly, it's a sense of pride. Like I walk around and I broadcast and I think I'm representing Newhouse. I, I have this thing, everyone thinks it's a joke, but it's not, I only broadcast my Newhouse pen. I, I make sure that I visit Newhouse every year and I get about eight or 10 from Professor Stomsky. And if I don't have my Newhouse pen, I feel completely off. Um, but I think it just reminds me that, you know, you come from a standard, right? You come from a standard that has to be upheld. And every time I broadcast and I'm on air or I'm representing myself in work, in life, I represent Newhouse. Like I represent God, like I represent my family. Um, and so it gave me a lot, um, but also just the opportunities to really get into broadcasting to start my career um, and the people that believed in me. I mean, the relationships that I got from Newhouse um, are awesome are, and are second to none in my life, honestly, besides my family. And new house is nothing short of a game changer, as we both know. Yeah. I want to touch on just, you've played for four different programs throughout college. I think that's rare air. Uh, yeah. Give me some of the advantages and disadvantages from playing with four programs. Yeah. Um, first advantage I thought of was a lot of gear. Um, I go to the gym every day in a different t-shirt from a different school. Uh, and so that's always fun. I've got like the best color wave. I have orange and blue, like that gator orange. Then I have the Syracuse orange. Mm -hmm. Then I have Fordham and it's white and maroon. And then I have Sienna, which is yellow and green. So I can really wear all the colors of the rainbow besides red for some reason. Red, red just was not in the plans <laughs> besides red um, any given day and go work out. So I love how much gear I have. Um, again, the relationships are huge, right? Just being able to you know, meet two or three people who really stick with you. Um, from each school has been awesome to me, um, you know, because I was at Syracuse the longest and because I feel like I really started um, my I guess, personal story or legacy or kind of just my life really with broadcasting and kind of putting it all together and feeling like I discovered a purpose that I could have right to be on TV to, you know, be a part of um, representation and to be a role model. Um, I call that my, my college home. If anyone ever asked me, I'm like, yes, yeah, Syracuse is my college home. Um, I would say a disadvantage though, is just the constant hopping around, um, just the constant need to adapt, uh, to go different places, you know, to create those new relationships, right? Because then you're constantly building trust again, and you're constantly meeting new people, right? And all of those things take energy. And, and to some degree, you're kind of always uncomfortable, um, you know, because you're, you're in a new place every other two to three years, right? Um, and then I also think, you know, if anything else, you know, life moves on, right? So all the relationships that I had that I started with my freshman year of college at Florida, and, you know, definitely aren't the same now, seven years later, when I went to three different schools that are nowhere near Florida. Um, and so, you know, it's been a lot of uh, give and take, I feel like with just the different schools that I've been to, but also from a basketball standpoint, I'm just really well traveled in that way. You know, I played in the SEC, the ACC and the MAC. Um, and, you know, was at Fordham and didn't play, but obviously now know the A-10. So from a broadcaster standpoint, it's great because I've got really good relationships um, and information about all of those uh, conferences, um, but also just being able to play against some of the best competition um, everywhere, you know, really all alongside the East Coast, which is dope. Now, playing professional is certainly an accomplishment of its own for any athlete, but not many can say that they're going overseas to pursue their dream. What are you most nervous about? Oh, honestly, just the culture. Um, you know, really just uh, thinking I know where the subway shop is and walking the wrong way and then realizing <laughs> I'd have no idea where I am and I don't know German and it's going to be hard for me to communicate. So maybe getting lost, I think, honestly, is, is what I'm most nervous about. 
Um, I'm so excited to play basketball in Europe. Uh, I, I feel like the European style of basketball has definitely transferred over here to America. And so I don't feel like that will be much of a culture change for me in that way. Um, really excited to just experience uh, the fans, the atmosphere, the traveling to different countries. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting because overseas, right, uh, we, they're, their countries are like our states, right? So how I can go from Jersey to DC, I could also go from Germany to France, right? And I can be in Paris like that, which is kind of cool. Um, and so I'm really excited about that and just experiencing the culture, but it's awesome what a game can, can do in your life. You know, like a game of basketball brought me a career in broadcasting. It brought me a lot of relationships. It taught me a lot about my character and helped build my character. Um, and now it's taking me overseas to make some money for something that I just love to do, right? Something that I was whining I couldn't do because I was injured so many years. And now I'm getting paid to do it, which is awesome. Let's end with this, Isis. You have to close a chapter to start a new one. And yeah. this certainly feels like a big change uh, coming for you, bouncing around from different colleges, the surgeries, being an analyst and a broadcaster and what is truly a, a male dominant business. Uh, what message would you have to any girl, any person rather that maybe is hesitant to follow their passion, whether it's injuries that uh, stop them, whether it's life changes, so many different circumstances, uh, what message would you have? Yeah, I never forget. Um, Beth Moen said this uh, during a talk she gave, we were getting ready to call an ACC game last year together. We did an all female broadcast and she said, uh, it was Mark Twain, I believe that said, why wouldn't you go out on a limb? That's where the fruit is. Um, and so I, I would just say to, to take a chance, right? To be resilient. Um, we're all gonna get knocked down. You're going to be met with obstacles. It's inevitable that life is going to kick you. It's inevitable. Like life goes right for no one all the time. Uh, and so, you know, expect the different changes, expect to be uncomfortable. But if you don't take a chance, you'll just never know. You know, um, I, I, I can't tell you how bad my first, uh, interview was where I interviewed my teammate in the ice box, the first ever broadcast thing I did. I wouldn't even look back at it now because I would cringe and I'd probably laugh. Like, why did I think I could do this? But if I didn't take that chance and do it and then show someone and get feedback, we wouldn't be here. My life wouldn't look how it looks. Um, so I would just say, take a chance. You got to bet on yourself and then bet on yourself again. Well, Isis, I certainly learned a lot. I'm sure our audience learned a lot about you and your journey and what an excitement it is for you to embark on this new journey. And we're excited to keep up with that. So I really appreciate you taking the time to come on the program today. Thanks so much, Bailey. It's been awesome to be here. So good to talk to you. It's always fun to catch up with Newhouse fam.